I uh, translated the German in chapter four. Got it done last night. I went to work today. A long day. I'm um, home now. Last time. Last time I got all the way up to breakfast in the house. Something about orange juice and NPR. Took me a minute to write down some general advice when it comes to zampanos, detours, or excessive writings. Figured, no harm, no foul. I don't like it done to me because it always does mean something. At least to me, so why do it to him? I don't cut anything. By the end, I didn't even know where I was heading, so I went back to that big German passage at the start to copy it down and called it a night. It's been sitting around for about a week while I looked for some way to crack it, and I finally got it done. It last night. Yeah, so it's done. Uh, today I got home, picked it back up, went to where we meet my brother Tom, and I realized I missed something. Maybe. This is it, right? Davidson house? All the cameras inside and everything? It's the house. Do you remember how it looked before? I looked at the tapes. I looked at the tapes I made last time. When I first opened this, I remember what it looked like. I know what it looked like. In this hallway? These doors? They, they weren't there. They're here now. They're on the tapes too, but I know they weren't. There's a lot to this one. So much that I don't even know if it's supposed to be one chapter. It feels like two stuck together. It doesn't help that it opens like this, up before the horse again. I'm starting to think it doesn't matter what order it is. starting to think it doesn't matter what the order is because it all comes out the same. Side A to side B. After the stuff about the bookshelf, Sampano writes about the Greek myth of Echo. We can't appreciate the importance of space in the Nevitson record if we don't understand echoes, apparently. They have a literal and thematic presence. 
Echo's story is sad. No matter what version you get, she was a mountain and very beautiful. But that beauty doesn't count for anything when all that's left at the end is your voice. Take one. Echo helps Zeus pull someone into bed that he wanted to give the thunder of the gods, which is how most of Zeus's stories go. His wife Hera found out Echo helped him cheat and punished her by making it impossible to say anything except for the last few sounds anyone says. That's when, in hiding, in isolation. That's when, hiding in isolation, Echo fell in love with Narcissus. But Narcissus being Narcissus, he only had eyes for himself. And Echo wasted away, leaving nothing but her voice, which mimicked the end of everything he said. Take number two. The god Pan falls in love with Echo. Echo's not into guys who have hooves instead of feet. So he rips her apart and buries every last bit except for her voice. Very romantic. There. Like I said, there's a lot here. I don't even know why I turned the camera on. I've already said what I needed to. I'm not about to repeat myself. There. Like I said, there's a lot here. I don't even know why I turned on the camera. I've already said what I needed to. I'm not about to repeat myself. I don't want to admit that I get it. It's a lot of front-loading without cause, explanation without mystery. It's like detours for the sake of detours unless you actually consider what's being given. That takes acceptance. Then what you have turns into possibility or even worse, the truth. If you learn the truth, don't know what it means, you get an answer and nobody asked you the question, you're responsible for finding the question. It's a riddle in reverse. Philosophical wanderings of a withered old brain, before we even get to the point it's trying to make. Best sign, best most sign. That's why. That's why you wrote that. That's why you wrote the whole echo nonsense. And that's why he keeps putting the cart before the horse. Because an echo, it's an altered version. It's a twisted mimic. It comes after you hear the echo. That was why. That was why he wrote that. And that's why he wrote the echo nonsense. And that's why he keeps putting the cart before the horse. Because an echo is an exact copy of its source. It's an altered version. It's a twisted mimic. It comes after you hear the echo. You hunt down the source, use the echo to find your way, that's echolocation. You hear an echo, and you didn't make it. You know there's an origin point it bounced off of, or came from. It doesn't matter what it was, Zeus or Pan, as long as you know what happened in the end. Mos es sign, es mos sign. Must be, it must be. What does that sound like to you? One half question, one half answer. One full message. Mecca. The unbearable lightness of being, the novel it came from, with Tomas and Teresa, meet Will Mavidson and Karen Green, a photojournalist with a cheating spouse, meets photojournalist with a cheating spouse. 
Zeus and Echo meet Pan and Echo. So why am I so mad? Why are you getting upset about it, Johnny? I, uh, I found this this morning. I read up to page 57 the night before, jotted down a footnote about a discrepancy in the writing, finished the passage and went to bed. I barely slept all night because I knew I could check. I just got up. I just had to walk down the hall. I wanted to. I didn't want to. I knew if there was a rhyme to this, I needed to wait until morning. I thought that would give me a reason. If you win, you lose. Echo learned that helping Zeus. 